exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to Phantoms and Monsters Personal Reports where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to Phantoms and Monsters and the Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. So thanks for joining me. This channel was made possible by you clicking the subscribe and like buttons and by you sharing our programming. Super chat and super thanks donations are appreciated. You can uh, click the dollar icon located below the chat box. The Buy Me A Coffee link and banner are also shown. So uh, thanks for your consideration. Um, I want to welcome all new members to the channel, as well as first timers in the chat. If you have been, if you are listening to me for the first time, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, now, if you're in the chat and you have a question, please use all caps. I will try to get to each and every one after the presentation, and I will let you know when I'm on the last account so you can start posting your questions. So tonight, we're going to talk about lizard people, lizard man, men, or whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, all great legends are based on real events. Uh, subsequent events simply add to the legend. Uh, this seems to be the case for the lizard man of Scape or Swamp, a phenomenon that crescendoed into a national story. It remains the namesake uh, for the small town of Bishopville, South Carolina, and I will talk about the incident during the presentation. But is the lizard man or reptoid phenomena reality? Is it a figment of someone's imagination or is it a flesh and blood corporeal being? You know, I've received hundreds of accounts from experiencers over the several decades, and uh, every account is different, uh, some more terrifying than others. Uh, but I'll let you decide whether these are extraterrestrial, interdimensional humanoids, or a species of cryptid that occasionally makes itself known to unsuspecting witnesses. So listen to the reports and form your conclusions about what these lizard beings are. If you have questions, feel free to post them in the live chat. Now, uh, in the summer of 1988, there were uh, several lizard man accounts reported. One encounter may have produced physical evidence after the creature was supposedly shot. Now, most folks can recall the accounts of the skateboard lizard uh, or the skateboard swamp lizard man. In the early morning hours of June 29, 1988, a young man named Christopher Davis was driving along a dark and remote road through the woods of Scape or Swamp in the area near Bishopville, South Carolina. <clears throat> he then got a flat tire and got out to fix it. As soon as the spare was on, Davis had a terrifying encounter. He stated, I looked back and saw something running across the field towards me. It was about 25 yards away and I saw red eyes glowing. I ran into the car and as I locked it, the thing grabbed the door handle. I could see him from the neck down. It had three big fingers, long black nails and green rough skin. It was strong and angry. I looked in my mirror and saw a blur of green running. I could see his toes and then he jumped into, onto the roof of the car. I thought I heard a grunt, and then I could see his fingers through the front windshield, where they curled around on the roof. I sped up and swerved to shake the creature off. So Davis sped home after the creature took off. He, uh, he told a dramatic account to his father, who then called Sheriff Liston Truesdale, who was more than a bit skeptical. 
Now, although the damage to the vehicle was just as Davis had said, Truesdale suspected that it had been the work of pranksters and that the boy had then made up the whole story of the lizard man. He was so suspicious of the outlandish story that he had Davis take a lie detector test, which he passed. Now, there were other reports of encounters that same summer, but another lizard humanoid encounter may have produced physical evidence. A witness from Shaw Air Force Base near Shaw, South Carolina, named Kenneth Orr. On August 5th, 1988, Orr claimed that he had encountered a lizard man out on Highway 15 and had managed to shoot it. In this case, there was even physical evidence brought forward in the form of alleged blood and scales from the wounded beast. When authorities sought to charge him for carrying a pistol without a permit, he retracted his statement. It is unknown just what happened to the supposed physical evidence. This was one of the accounts that encouraged the radio station WCOS to offer a reward of $1 million to anyone who could bring in the beast alive or dead, which brought in all manner of monster hunters traipsing about the area with loaded weapons. <clears throat> now, although the sightings dropped off somewhat after the summer of 1988, they did not stop altogether. And, and there have been sporadic sightings of the creature ever since. Now, in the 1990s, there was a report by a Robert Cooper of the Army Corps of Engineers who claimed to have seen a creature that looked half man, half dinosaur running alongside the road. In 2004, a girl claimed that a large lizard-like humanoid had le leaped from the river to try and grab her. The following year, in 2005, there was an account of a woman in Newberry, South Carolina, who reportedly saw two of the creatures with glowing red eyes outside of her rural home. <clears throat> More recently was a 2008 report in which a Bishopville couple, Bob and Dixie Rawson, claimed that their minivan had been mauled by some sort of animal, leaving huge gashes and heavy damage on the sides and grill, and that there had been a dead cow and coyote found in a nearby field. Now, in 2013, monster hunter and author Lyle Blackburn wrote an excellent book titled Lizard Man, The True Story of the Bishopville Monster. It was an expertly crafted allegory that is informative as well as entertaining. <clears throat> the investigation conducted by the local authorities are chronicled so well that the reader shares in the drama of the encounters. The book provides exceptional documentation for one of the most bizarre cases of an unknown creature. It's the first time that the full and genuine story behind the Bishopville monster has been disclosed. And by the way, uh, Lyle's book, I, I named that as the best, personally, the best uh, cryptid book of 2013. It was, um, it was excellent. And I'm, I'm sure there are many of them out there. So I, I'd imagine and hope that you would uh, go ahead and buy a copy because it, it is very well detailed. A lot of photographs, and uh, Lyle did an excellent job with it. Now, the next account, a Memphis, Tennessee police officer recalls his bizarre encounter with a lizard humanoid while on a special assignment in the late 1980s. A very interesting and detailed description of the creature. He states, this incident occurred in Memphis, Tennessee. I started my career as a Memphis police officer for a few years previously in the 1980s. I was on a special assignment at the time. It was 2 a.m. It was a clear summer night, but quite humid. I was in my personal vehicle with the top down the radio playing. I was still in my uniform, including my bulletproof vest and a gun belt with all the regular equipment attached to it. I was heading south on Covington Pike at a good rate of speed and was the only one on the road. This part of the road connects the Raleigh Bartlett area to the Berkeley area. The road is slightly elevated as the surrounding area is low and running through it is Wolf River, which is a few miles from here and connects to the Mississippi. This area is commonly referred to by the locals as the Wolf River Bottoms these days. 
Now, as I was driving in my peripheral vision over to the right, just outside my headlight beams, I noticed something was moving fast directly toward the front of my car. I immediately slammed on the brakes thinking that a deer was running across the road, but I couldn't have been more wrong. It came to a screeching halt right in the middle of the road, right in front of my headlights, not more than seven feet from my bumper. As we both froze in place, staring at each other for several seconds. It appeared to be two to three feet tall, but was also crouched. It could have been closer to five if it stood straight up, but I got the impression that its current body posture was its normal way of standing. It had a large head, at least compared to its skinny, slender body. It appeared to be dark gray and greenish in color, like the color of an alligator, but the appearance of the skin looked uh, like a similar texture to a human's. It had dark, large, oval eyes on each side of the upper part of its face running slanted from the top portion of its head to about the midsection of its head. It was a kind of pointing in it was kind of pointing inward to where you would expect a nose to be. However, from what I could tell, there was no distinct nose, at least none like a human. Below the eyes was a very thin, dark, almost black line, which I assume was its mouth. It ran from about the same location a human's mouth would be. However, the line ran straight across the lower face in front and then turned upward and slightly back on the head. It had no ears that I could see. Its body and chest area were rounded like a human, but vastly smaller, almost like a child's. Its arms appeared to be longer and somewhat disproportionate to its body, and they were skinny and had an insect type look to them. I could make out hands, but they were also completely folded at the wrist joint. The legs were long because even with the thing's shortness, I can make out the top of them even with it so close to the bumper, which was obscuring the bottom half somewhat. They were like arms, then an insect-like, but appeared to be jointed. I did notice its chest area moving slightly like it was breathing, but it seemed slow and steady. I never noticed anything like genitalia. There was no hair any place that I could see, and I'm not even sure if it was wearing any kind of clothing. If it was, it would have been skin tight. I never noticed a tail at any point. My adrenaline was pumping, and it was only a brief period of observation. It again took off like a shot and was out of my headlights. I could still make out its outline in the darkness, and it was moving like a sprinter. It leaped over the guardrail onto the other side of the road and down the embankment. I will admit that this was not the only bizarre incident that I've had during my career, but it was the strangest. I never told anyone on the force about the encounter. In fact, I only mentioned it to a close friend over these many years. I can only identify it as a lizard man or an unknown humanoid. I would have never believed it unless I actually witnessed it. Now, this next account, a Ukrainian woman was lying by the beach, sunning herself and dozing off. When she suddenly awoke, she was terrified to see a huge bipedal lizard-like being near her. Now, a young woman named Irina B. was living in the countryside cottage that was, and was visiting a secluded beach on the banks of the Dnieper, the Dnieper River in the region of Europe. She frequented the area often and knew it well. Her favorite area was an isolated small inlet covered with sandy beaches and bushes. The area had numerous gaping holes or crevices all around, some of them quite large and possibly artificially made by the locals. Now, on this day, she was lying by the beach sunning herself and dozing off when she suddenly awoke with the feeling that someone was staring at her. She opened her eyes and was terrified to see a huge bipedal lizard-like being about two meters in height and covered with greenish scales standing very close to her. Terrified, she couldn't scream and waited for the worst to happen. 
But suddenly she heard a voice inside her head. Don't be afraid. My rations do not include albumin, which is protein. I'm not going to eat you. The witness was not sure if the, the mysterious voice spoke in Russian, but she distinctively understood everything that it said. The voice seemed to have correctly anticipated her apprehension. How is this possible? Just answer her immediately. Nothing unusual, simply telepathy. She sat on her towel looking at the huge lizard-like being looming over her. The voice inside her head once again reacted to her thoughts and said, you're afraid of my appearance. That can be corrected. Then a blink of an eye, she saw the most beautiful young man she had ever seen in her life. How did you do that? She asked in amazement, now feeling more curious than afraid. In a moment, she received the answer easily. You see what you want to see. I simply compel you to see what you want. They both began communicating by using uh, telepathy. The lizard man told an amazing story. Apparently, he was a criminal on his planet, and other species on his planet had wanted to punish him. But he had exceeded, succeeded in escaping and had been wandering all over the galaxy for a long time hiding from bounty hunters that were chasing him. For some time now, of all these holes at the beach had become his shelter. But he was now tired of hiding and wanted to be found and punished. He had evidently been observing her every time she had come to the beach for a while. She reminded him of his home planet where the creatures also liked the sun and the water. He just wanted to chat with her since he had been an outcast from his planet for so long. Now, at the end of the conversation, the lizard man told Arena that he would erase her memory or her brain would not sustain such huge volumes of new information and would simply explode. He promised that it wouldn't be painful. Suddenly, everything around her was encased in a bluish light. And horrified, she watched the body of the lizard dissolve into nothingness. And next, she lost consciousness. She was briefly reported missing, and a search was organized to find her. Her parents and the neighbors found her the next day on the beach. She was found lying on the sand, bleeding from her nose and one ear. The doctors at the hospital were puzzled, thinking that she might have had a brain hemorrhage. She was alive only by a miracle. The witness insists that she did not invent the story, even though she is aware that it sounds like the ravings of a lunatic. <laughs> now, this next account, a shaman recalls his experience with a red reptilian being that manifested from an orb. Now, after waking several hours later, the cast on his broken ankle was removed and the ankle healed. I was settling into bed after a day of shamanism work and deep meditation for two hours. My two dogs were in bed with me. I had broken my ankle the day before and was trying to get comfortable. I was playing on my phone when the room lit up with a white glowing sphere coming from the living room into my bedroom. It was about as big as a basketball and it settled at the foot of my bed. My dogs jumped down and ran. The sphere grew and began a and became a red reptilian lizard man standing at the foot of my bed. He had a musky odor to him or her. He had no wings or horns and was perfectly bipedal. Now, my first reaction was anger. As a shaman, I served the Norse god Odin. I am used to orbs, interdimensional beings, or spirits. My first reaction was anger. I thought. I worked for Odin today, and now he isn't going to protect me from this? I instantly knew it was there to feed off my energy and possibly report back to whoever saw the cult I was raised in. I rolled over and let it put me into instant sleep. I was too tired to fight. I woke up an hour later on top of the covers, and my cast was off. My broken ankle was completely healed. I got under the covers and went back to sleep. Over the next two weeks, 
I was exhausted and slept 13 to 20 hours a day. I also craved meat. I could never feel full from enough meat. Some friends helped me out with energy, but after one day, I was back to feeling drained again. The overall feelings were anger, disgust, and hopelessness. I also felt fear and seduction. It was as if I feared the being, but also was drawn to it. Interesting account. Now this next account, a group of um, mountain bike cyclists are in the Arizona desert when they encounter a six foot tall, skinny lizard-like entity. And one of the witnesses stated that it looked like a chameleon humanoid. In February, 2014, three mountain bike cyclists were making their way along the challenging 17 mile Old Pueblo race course just east of Tucson, Arizona. Now the course is a grueling, dry, withered moonscape of land to traverse and packing water and food is a necessity if one wants to survive. At around the halfway point, they came across something none of them have ever expected to see in this sun-blasted badlands. One of the witnesses would say of the encounter, we had been riding for about, I don't know, nine hours or so, taking breaks every now and then. Then Michael says he needs to stop for a minute. We were waiting for him to finish when all of a sudden we see this lone figure walking across the trail. It's about six foot tall, very skinny in form and had an awkward gait like a monkey or a man with a disease, almost robotic. Then all I remember about Michael is him saying, what the hell is that? Or somewhat, something like that. But he sounded far away. He probably used a different word instead of hell. The thing is, he had somehow walked a bit towards the thing. Don't ask me why, maybe to look at it better, but not knowing what it was. The creature stopped and made eye contact with me, and I could see it clearly. The eyes were kind of like a snake, but yellow with a black stripe in the middle of the eye. It had green and red scales on the face and head. The red color was kind of like the same as the desert sand, and it looked like it had a sandy texture too. It didn't have a nose, only two holes on it. I couldn't see any ears or hair, a red mouth that looked like it had blood around it, but it didn't look like it was bleeding. It looked like a pattern. It reminded me of a chameleon, but it looked like a person too. The odd creature then stood up to its fullest height and raised its long arms to gesture to them, all the while making an unearthly chattering sound before scampering off like a lizard trying to hide. The unsettled men excitedly talked about what to do and they decided to just keep going and finish the course. However, the strange encounter did not leave them and none of them could forget it. As one of the witnesses would say later, later when you read these stories online or watch them on TV, well, you think, man, these people are crazy on meds or something or in need of attention. But this has made me a believer. There must be more of them out there. If there's one, there's got to be at least two, right? I know most people won't believe a word I said. That's the way I, I used to be, but I don't blame them at all. But they are out there. I'm not saying that this is an alien or a chupacabra or something like that. All I am saying is that I have never seen anything like it in my life. But I am no biologist, so what do I know? Now, this next account I received several years ago. Uh, it's an interesting one. Hello, Lon. A few nights ago, I was outside and walking around my farm where I live alone, and I saw a series of lights moving across the sky. At first, I thought nothing of it, but then one of the lights stopped moving and something dropped from it like a pot or something. I freaked out and ran to my house and locked the doors. Being a woman of only 35 years old, I am easy to spook. The next morning, 
I woke up with a figure sitting at the foot of my bed. The figure was reptilian, like a lizard, lizard or something. It spoke English and had a deep hiss to its voice. It told me this. I mean you no harm, Wormling. I only seek to explore your world and its life forms. I am only a male scout in which I am looking for samples. I asked, how are you talking to me? Where did you come from? His reply, you only hear the tone you understand, but I cannot say too much. May I take a sample of your hair? My reply, I guess, but where did you come from and what are you? What are you? He went over to me and put his hand on my head and I felt very cold and, and it felt very cold and scaly. Then he plucked a strand of hair from my head and put it in some sort of cylinder. After that, he told me, thank you, my overlord will be pleased. Then he just vanished. My skin turned numb where he had touched me. And I've had a cold ever since. I did not know how to feel towards the encounter. I did not feel threatened, but rather curious. The reptilian was lime green, stood maybe six foot tall and looked muscular. <clears throat> it wore all black from its neck down and it had some sort of belt lined with gadgets of sorts. The face had a snout like a normal lizard and his eyes were large and purple. What was this thing and does it have anything to do with the lights I'd seen before? Will he or any of his kind come back? Now I have to say the Wormling reference is kind of odd. I had never heard that before and I haven't heard it since. I remember it being used in another encounter but I don't even know when or where. I mean, it, it, I don't even know if it was even said at that point. But, you know, honestly, if anybody has any reference to the warmling, is it because, uh, you know, humans are warm-blooded as opposed to cold-blooded lizard or humanoid? I don't know. But I thought I found that interesting. <clears throat> now, I received this next account, too. Lon, I have heard and seen reptoid beings in the area five miles east of Phoenix, Arizona. The Superstition Mountains have been an area of encounters, and it is said to have both an alien base and laboratories under it. The military has also had an underground base there and interacts on experiments with aliens, hmm, supposedly. I've heard a lot of things about this place, too. About 20 years ago, I encountered an individual that spent time exploring some of the old mines in the area. Now, he had vanished for months before I ran into him again. I asked him where he had been all this time. Here's his story. He spotted a mine entrance on the west side of the main mountainside. He said that mine looked, like to, looked to be in good shape, but he started walking into the shaft. He had gone about a half mile in when he saw a sign that said no entrance beyond this point. The mine shaft was still in good shape, so he went 100 yards. He told me that people seemed to come out of the walls of the shaft. Men in black uniforms questioned him and then took him to a holding area in Mesa, Arizona for 72 hours. They questioned him again and found out that his home was in Colorado. They gave him the plane ticket to Denver and told him to never come back to the Phoenix area. He asked me not to tell anyone that I had seen him. He wanted to pick up personal items that he had left behind. And I had never seen him since then. Now, there are other stories of treasure hunters going into the old mine shafts and finding holographic walls in the shaft. And I've heard those as well. They did not try to enter the area beyond the wall as they feared that they may not be able to get back out. They told me that they took a round rock and rolled it through the screen and heard it roll for some distance. One of them reached through the screen with a flashlight in his hand. He turned the flashlight back toward the screen but could not see any light. He said that he withdrew his arm as he was, had the feeling that something was back there and he didn't want it to grab his arm and drag him in. Now, I asked the men to take me up there and show me the mine. They all said no way they were going back there 
we got a topo mat out and they showed me the area and they had where they had encountered the wall. Now, I, get, I did go into the area to search, but I was never able to find the mine. This is not strange as other people have found opening, opening and marked the entrance with a pyramid of rocks and left to get lights and more people and equipment. When they got back, the rocks were gone, were still there as they had stacked them, but the entrance was gone. Now, there have been sightings of reptoids about nine foot tall in that area. As soon as they sense that they are being watched, they vanish. People have also seen lizard beings about the size of a man with a bat-like wing and tails. They fly out in the open, to the opening and the cliffs at twilight and vanish as since they are being as if they're being watched. Now the Native Americans have seen these things for hundreds of years and have legends about them. They say that they're shapeshifters and can make you see them in any form they want. I found this out on a personal encounter with a reptoid I encountered on a trail. Now, as I was walking up an inner trail in the mountains, I looked up and saw a man coming toward me on the trail. He had appeared out of thin air. As I walked toward him, I noticed his eyes. They were reptoid vertical slits. When he sensed that I knew what he was, he hit me with a psychic blow that I can only describe as being hit in the head with a sledgehammer. It stunned me and almost drove me to my knees. As I shook this off, I looked up and he was gone. I had a headache for two days after that and think he could have killed me if he wanted to. There are just some of the strange things that have been seen up there. We have seen different types of alien craft that appear to enter the mountain, ghost orbs, UFO orbs that have been seen in different area for hundreds of years that disappear at different old mines, wells, and some just enter to face them out. I would love to get in touch with a well-equipped investigative team and have them check some of the strong magnetic fields that may act as dimensional portals where some of these creatures come and go. One day, our government may tell us the truth on their involvement with alien encounters and tech that have been traded for their abduction of us. Well, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Uh, <laughs> be quite honest with you. So here's the last account. So if you have questions, you can start posting them. It's titled, I was married to a shape-shifting demon. Not my title. That was the title that was given to me. The witness states, for eight years, it was my misfortune to be married to a woman who I discovered not long after our marriage to be a shape-shifting negative entity in human form. I saw her shape-shift on several occasions. From our union sprang three daughters, two of whom are like uh, are, are the like nature of their mother. During the years of our marriage, my then wife engaged in satanic rituals and similar practices for the purpose of invoking and evoking negative entities of her own kind. A side effect of these practices is that, that she drew into manifestation of many entities who were eventually able to appear whenever they wished to without having to be drawn in by ritual. For me, this nightmare didn't end until my divorce in 1985. Unable to get rid of the unwanted visitors, I frequently spoke to them to determine who they were and what they wanted. These entities were cold, ruthless, and without any compassion. Without exception, they all loathed and despised humans and often spoke of a long-term agenda for taking over the planet for themselves. I found this self-declared agenda highly disturbing and worried worrying but it was not i was not sure if they were telling the truth or simply winding me up out of malice they often spoke of places such as draco and orion and on several occasions i suffered encounters with an, an entity whom they referred to as their leader he he was without doubt the most terrible entity with whom i have ever had contact and he declared on one occasion that he is the one whom religious people would call Satan the devil. 
amongst many other things, the entities told me that they were not the only alien life forms on this planet, many of whom they declared have incarnated in human form through the millennia to carry out their long-term goal. I was told that various other aliens have been incarnated here, but for other reasons or other purposes. Although full hatred, contempt, and loathing for human beings and negative entities were surprisingly civil to me, when I was once asked why this was so, I was told, much to my surprise, that's because I am not human. Your body is human, but your soul is not. I was told by several of the entities. They told me that I was not one of their kind and had nothing in common with them, but was an alien on this planet as themselves were. I eventually discovered this to be entirely true when I once discovered my spiritual origin. Many experiences I have had and many things which I was told by the alien entities made perfect sense and are now comprehensible to me. That was from the witness and uh, they lived in Cumbria, uh, UK. And that was sent to me in April of 2001. I haven't heard back from the person and they never gave me their name. So uh, yeah, that's quite an interesting account. So let's see what we got here. Uh, super chats, super stickers, Robo1776. Thank you so much. Uh, Mortal Clown, thank you again. And peace, glad to see you back. Thank you for your work, Lon. I appreciate the donations. Much appreciated. So, folks, you got questions? Let's, let's go at it. Okay. Peace ask. Bon, have you ever even have you even encountered a reptilian? No, I haven't. I can't say I have. I I will tell you this though. Now I did I did have several encounters and I was abducted at least once that I know of. And I wrote about it in my book, um, Alien Disclosure. The, the cause of my abduction at the time, I believe, and was told because of David Eckhart. I was told by David Eckhart that they would visit me at some point. And, uh, but they didn't come around until after my wife had passed away. Uh, I think she was, you know, she had heard stories from David and she was fearful. And I didn't write my book until after she passed uh, because, uh, you know, I didn't want to upset her. But uh, anyway, now these beings that took me, there were three of them. They came three, two times to my place. And the third time they, they literally took me somewhere. Uh, they were tall. I call them tall whites or top, tall grays. They didn't exactly look reptilian, but they could have very well been reptilian. I believe they were probably eight to nine foot in height. And during the abduction, they did show me some historical recreations of some of the early civilizations, including Egypt and how they were involved with the Egyptian story. So uh, I, I went and wrote about it a bit uh, in the book. Maybe one day I'll just go back and and do the whole narrative of what had happened during the abduction. I, I really have never written it down and talked about it uh, to a, you know in detail, but I may very well do that. Maybe enough of you ask me to do it, I'll do it. Uh, Savage Grammy. When the entity vanished, did it step into a portal or dissipate into another dimension? Um, from what it sounded like, it, it looked like it just dissipated, but it could have very well walked into a portal. I mean, you know, I'm not discounting that. Um, you know, now I'm just going about from what David had told me about his experiences with these reptilians that they always use the device, some type of portal, some type of equipment 
that literally was a, a you know turned into a very bright blue light when they uh, when they manifested inside this thing, and then when they got in to leave, it manifested another blue light when they dissipated. Uh, but I cannot remember him ever talking about those beings just dissipating while he was watching them or, you know, other than going through a portal. Now, they would go through the portal on the wall where they would, he would take them to an underground, which he talked about. And I'm, I had described very detailed in the book. So, uh, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what these beings did. Uh, let's see. Beat three airspace. Lon, have you ever encountered a lizard person? No, I haven't. Not that I know of. You know, you know that's the whole. That's the funny thing about alien encounters, or you know, if you want to call them aliens or other being encounters. Do you remember all of it? I mean, you know, I've known people who have had encounters and didn't remember until 20, 30, 40 years later. And then it just pops into their head, or if they go into into a regression, it will come out. Uh, if I encounter one, I, I don't remember. Magnus, could Riptow sightings be related to the Hackman or Shadow entities? Uh, I guess it's a possibility. You know, I. I'm intuitive and I, I have done a lot of remote view work and I have worked with people who have had shadow people encounters or have infestations in their home. I have never found any evidence of a reptilian being or some type of lizard being being a, a part of that. Those shadow beings were an entirely different entity. Now, I'm not saying that they may not be extraterrestrial. They may very well be because there's no spirit or human spirit to them. Um, I do not believe they're of this world. I think they do come for a period and they go to an area where they can feed off certain energy and survive. But uh, I don't think they're related to the reptilians. I could be wrong, but I just don't think they are. Mortal Clown asks, Bigfoot in Kansas. Yes, there are Bigfoot in Kansas. I have had a couple of reports. Uh, Delmas Mars, question, do you think reptilians are related to black-eyed kids? Uh, I don't think so, unless they're shape-shifting. Now, I have never been near a black-eyed kid that I know of. I have never read any energy or sensed any energy. Uh, but I, it would surprise me that they would be related to these reptilian beings. Now, I don't know, but that's the only, that's the only answer I can give you at this point. Sorry. Uh, Monica Davias, Ukrainian woman did, how did she remember if the entity erased her memory? I don't know. Maybe after she had the medical treatment, the, uh, the, uh, the race, the mechanism for erasing it, or maybe it just didn't work on her. I don't know. Um, he did. He did tell her that her her head would explode if she remembered it. Well, she did have injuries. Uh, she had bleeding in the ear, so uh, maybe the uh, the erasure procedure that they used just didn't work on her. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Miss Tessa Maria, I'd love to hear your accounts, Lon. Please tell us more. Well, uh, if you come in every Friday night, I will tell you as much as you want to hear. Uh, I try to keep everything interesting as possible, but, you know, I don't make any of this stuff up. This is These are accounts that are absolutely sent to me or part of an investigation that we do. So. Um, but you're always welcome to send me suggestions at uh, lonstricklerfamismonsters.com, and I will try to accommodate you. Angie, do you think reptilians, lizard people, are native to Earth? I don't think they're native. I think they're here. 
I think they've been here for a long time. I think a lot of a lot of these uh, otherworldly entities have been here for a great deal of time. Just from what I was told during my abduction, and you know what other people have told me. Um, I don't know, but I, th I think they. I mean, I think they're still here, and I think you know, I think they are have been here for a long time. Peace. Thanks for the uh, donation. Hope you feel better soon. The allergy, oh, the allergies are terrible. I don't know what it, and it, you know, I tell you, and I'll be frank with you. Ever since I had my bariatric surgery, the vagus nerve, which I don't know many of you understand, but it, it usually becomes more sensitive uh, during that surgery. And when I'm talking a lot, my nose starts running a lot. I don't know what it is. I have tried different things to stop it, taking antihistamines. But if you see me with the uh, with the Kleenex, then then you know my vagus nerve is irritated a bit, uh, and it usually happens when I'm talking a lot. Uh, Jose Sanchez is the lizard man the same thing as the alien reptilians or something completely different? I think they're about the same thing. Um, you know, that, there have been all kinds of descriptions of these things over the years that I have received and others have received as well. I, I guess it's possible that they could be different, but quite honestly, I think they're the same thing. <coughs> Aaron G asked, are they cold-blooded? Are they mostly in warm climates and caves? Uh, they're usually in very humid areas for the most part. Um, if you all remember a, an account I had during the war, Vietnam War, where the soldiers had seen this thing coming out of a very human cave, uh, you know, and, and a lot of other accounts where they do, they do seem to end up in hot areas, warm areas, very humid areas. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's quite unusual when they end up in, in cold areas. I have heard of them being seen in, in cold areas, but many times I tend to believe those are holographic for whatever reason. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I just get that impression. Is that it, folks? Okay, well, I want to thank each and all of you for coming and watching and uh, listening and chatting. Uh, if you donated, it's truly appreciated. Uh, your support's what makes all this possible. So please like, subscribe, and share. If you have a sighting encounter that you'd like to be considered for this show or for the Fams and Monsters blog, feel free to email me at lonstricker at famsandmonsters.com. So until we meet again, you have a nice weekend. We're going to get snow here in the east. So I think it's already has started. So anyway, have a safe, enjoyable weekend, and I will talk to you all soon. Good night.